Hello and welcome to my first ever build guide for Project Diablo 2. After becoming the first person to hit 99 on Project Diablo 2, I decided to experiment with the Enchant Sorceress, and since then, people have been requesting on stream that I make a video for this build. First of all, I want to say that my build is currently not the most optimized, but I will try my best to cover as much of this build as I can. I will not be covering how to level with this build, as I have no experience, and I also don't recommend leveling with this. There will be gameplay footage in the background showcasing both Demon Machine and Widowmaker. I will try my best to keep this as short and simple as possible, so let's get into it. Let's talk about what you can expect from this build. Firstly, this build will require you to do a lot of weapon switching at the beginning of your runs, specifically so for mapping or if you're using low-end gear. Luckily, once you've completed your optimal pre-buff, it usually lasts for around 15 to 20 minutes, so you have plenty of time. Survivability and damage will depend on your gear as well as your effort to perform all of these weapon switches. This build has a lot of variety when it comes to both melee and ranged attacks, but I'll be talking mostly about the bow and crossbow versions of this. Let's talk about the stat points. For my version of this, you will need around 103 points into strength. It is worth mentioning that you may not need this much strength if you wish to strength bug your Andariel's visage and Chains of Honor. Next is Dexterity. Depending on the bow of your choice, you will need to have around 95 points into Dexterity if you plan to use Demon Machine only. However, if you wish to use both or just the Widowmaker, you will need around 146 points into Dexterity to meet the requirements. The rest of your points will go straight into Vitality. You won't need to worry about energy here. Let's talk about some breakpoints. In this build, FCR and FHR are entirely up to you and your gear. I find these to be personal preference in this build, but I achieved the 23% FCR and 20% FHR breakpoints with my bow out. It is easier to get more FHR, but harder to achieve more FCR unless you switch to your pre-buff before teleporting. IAS is the most important in this build. I currently aim for the 10 frame breakpoint, which is 102% IAS. I will share some values on screen for the breakpoints, as well as provide a link in the description to a useful attack speed calculator. Now it's time to get into the skill point allocation. This is what my skill tree looks like. Let's start with the lightning spells. I start off by putting one point into telekinesis and teleport. Static field is optional here. Now for the fire spells. I place one point into each of the prerequisites and begin maxing enchant fire, warmth, and fire mastery in that order. Now for the cold spells. I place one point into each of the prerequisites and begin maxing cold enchant, placing only one point into cold mastery, and then maxing chilling armor with every bonus point that I have available. If you were using the Dream Rune word, you would take out the points from Chilling Armor and place them into Lightning Mastery. Let's jump into gear. I'm going to start off by talking about your enchant pre-buff. It's important to note that enchant values will be impacted by fire skill damage and cold skill damage, as well as fire mastery and cold mastery. So for the pre-buff setup, you have a few options. The first one would be a Meng Song's Lesson if you want an easy alternative for weapon switching. This goes well for swapping when you have a CTA and a 5 socket staff that has 3 to energy shield. The best option for your pre-buff is to use a lidless wall alongside a specific sorceress orb. For fire enchant, you have two options. The easiest option would be in a shooter's temper with 3 to sorceress skills and 20% fire skill damage. The rest of the stats do not matter here. The extremely rare option would be to find a magic orb that has 3 to fire skills, 3 to enchant fire, and if you want to try and go all out, 3 to fire mastery. You also have two options for cold enchant. The easiest option would be a death fathom with 30% cold skill damage. Again, the rest of the stats do not matter here. The rare option would be to find a magic orb that has 3 to cold skills and 3 to enchant cold. Keep in mind that the staff mods do not allow cold mastery and enchant cold to spawn together due to cold enchant being a level 1 skill. CTA is optional, but I recommend it especially if you're going to do maps. Again, you have two options for this. You could use either a crystal sword, or as I mentioned before, a 5 socket staff, preferably one that has 3 to energy shield. Energy shield is also optional, but again, recommend it if you plan on doing maps. You have two good options, either the previously mentioned 5 socket staff with 3 to energy shield, or you could make the memory rune word in a 4 socket staff. It is worth mentioning that CTA may need to be reapplied during maps as it has a short duration, and the same goes for energy shield in the event that it does break. 
You can go even harder on your pre-buff if you wish to swap almost full inventory's worth of gear, but I don't do this. Now for the weapons. There are some great options for melee, but I'll be talking specifically about the bows. One viable option is Demon Machine. This bow is great if you're lower level and doing some earlier content that involves a lot of density, such as cows. It can also work in maps, but requires a pretty active playstyle in terms of positioning and lining things up. The other favourite option is Widowmaker, and this is solely because it grants multi-shot, which is amazing for clearing when you're enchanted. Moving on to helmets. I personally believe that Andariel's Visage is one of the best helmets for this build, but it will depend heavily on the corruption and socket combo that you get on the Widowmaker. Shaco is a great alternative, especially if you're looking for a bit more MF out of this build and a small boost in survivability. Nightwing's Veil is a great alternative if you're looking for a tiny little bit more out of your cold enchant. Steel Shade is amazing if you can get a plus 2 roll on it. Sadly, you don't get any benefit from the block that's been added to the item, but the Mana Leech, Fire Absorb, and MF are always great. Giant Skull is something I haven't actually tested yet, but could definitely work if you're looking for that 100% pierce and a small boost in physical damage. You might see a very tiny benefit from the Crushing Blow, and the knockback could be both a blessing and a curse. Armor Time I really like Chains of Honor for this build despite having slower cast frames. This build suffers a lot when it comes to resistances, and having the stats that come from Chains of Honor make it feel a lot better. However, the best alternative would be a Skin of the Viper Magi that has a plus one to all skills corruption with two sockets from the puzzle box, as you would be able to get FCR, resistances, as well as having the option to place two fire facets into the armor for a bit more damage and elemental pierce. Arcane's Valor is great, and with the right corruptions, this could be one of the best options out there for pre-buff and damage. Ormus's Robes is something that I haven't tested extensively, but I believe that this armor has potential to be the best pre-buff option in the game, as long as you get the right corruptions for it. When it comes to gloves, you will mainly want something that has pierce on it. Soul Drainer is a really good option for life and mana steel, and it already offers pierce. If you're able to corrupt these with extra pierce, they are incredibly good. Mage Fists are my go-to because I have a 15% pierce corruption on them, and the small boost in fire damage from Fire Mastery is nice until I get a good pair of Soul Drainers. You could also use something like Laying of Hands for attack speed, but it would be very important to have a pierce corruption on them. Unless you are planning to use the Giant Skull and Widowmaker combination, the best boots for this build are Treads of Cathon with 20% pierce. It's very important to get as close to 100% pierce as you possibly can, and these boots will help you achieve just that. If you don't need or want the pierce, there are plenty of other good options for boots that I'll let you figure out yourself. For the belts, I use a Arachnid Mesh for pre-buff, and if you're capable of getting a pierce corruption on this item, it'd probably be worth using all the time. I believe Razor Tail is the best option for this build though, as it will help you get very close to 100% pierce, and obviously if you can hit a pierce corruption, you're looking at an item which can give you up to 48% pierce. Ideally for rings, you will want two Bulkathos' Wedding Band rings with 5% lifesteal. If you don't have these, you can opt for Stone of Jordan or Wisp Projector. If you need a source of Canopy Frozen and don't have one on your boots, you should opt for a Ravenfrost. Amulets can be tricky. Having two plus four amulets for each of the enchants would be nice, but it's not essential and it's another headache for the pre-buff setup. Mara's Kaleidoscope is my go-to, mostly because it's hard to balance resistances in this build. If you are somehow able to get enough resistances, you could opt for the Rising Sun, as it would give you damage, and the Fire Absorb definitely helps out there. Any other amulet with plus skills works here as a starter option. For Grand Charms, you will want Fire Skill Charms that have as much faster hit recovery and life as you need. For Small Charms, you will want to maximize as much resistance, faster hit recovery, and life as possible. When it comes to corruptions, you will want as many plus skills and sockets as possible on the main pieces of gear. For gloves, you will want pierce, or in some cases maybe attack speed. And for boots and rings, you will want at least one source of canopy frozen, but if you have it elsewhere, you can offer any other stat that you find useful. When it comes to mercenaries, you have two good options here. If you need attack speed, you can run an Act 1 Rogue Mercenary using the Faith Rune Word. If you have enough attack speed and you're looking for a little bit more damage, it is best to use an Act 2 Desert Mercenary that is using Infinity. The rest of the gear is really up to you. 
I would do your best to make sure that you opt for some survivability gear that involves life leech, attack speed, and damage. If you have any questions about this build, feel free to leave it in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. Thanks for watching.